I had heard the rumors. Through a misguided miracle, a man had come back from time, endowed with powers that could reveal the very meaning of life. If ever we needed a champion, it was now. In his time, he was one of many, quite ordinary, so the story goes. But now, because of mad science gone wrong, combined with some incredible luck for us, he is back. Our last champion of the 60s, here for the 90s. I knew only that he is called the Free Thinker. I have to find that man. Come along if you can. Come along if you can. Welcome, everyone. I am the Free Thinker. Are you? We're back in the studio tonight with the interview portion of the Free Thinker show. Things are really moving fast for us, for myself and for the show. We're only three months into production, and already I've been able to locate, with the help of a private detective, a man who has endured a similar experience to mine. We found him through a poem he recently published called Rip Woke Up Too Soon. And it also turns out that he's running for president. Imagine that. So here, let's welcome, on the Freethinker Show, the last American beatnik. What can we call you? Hip cats who know where it's at call me Digger. I was born George Reynolds. And like you, Freethinker, I must wear these shades. But unlike you, I remember everything about my past. What I've had a hard time with is believing. I've been so far out for so many years. 33, man, can you dig that? Now I know, we've talked a lot about already our common experiences, and I can't figure out which is more hard to understand. We share so much, and yet we are so much different. I know the Freethinker audience is dying to hear about your campaign, but first, can you tell us a little bit about you and the Beat Generation? After all, you are the forerunner to the hippie. That's cool. But man, remember, what seems like last month to me was a long time ago. And lately, I've been catching up on that gap and working on the future. The great big daddy made me young in the 90s for a reason. You know, I'm the only man who's in his 20s and in his 60s at the same time. But it gets hazy when I talk about the past because it's just not that way to me. Please forgive my insensitivity. So how did you get to the beat scene? That's okay, Cat. I can handle it, Dig. I've always had a poet inside of me trying to get out. Now you hippie cats sure took the beat on down the line. But where I came from, there wasn't anything like that. I was born in the Depression. I survived the Korean War, then came McCarthyism, and the duck and cover paranoia of the Russians are coming. So, like most seekers of truth, I took a long trip. I went west. I went west as far as I could go to meet the east. They come together in a little coffee house back in San Francisco. There I fell in with some heavy cats and some heavy vibes I could not deny. This was a mystical time and place that today is only a fantasy. And I'm plenty steam that it was taken away from me. Anyone who watches this show knows that I was nabbed, thumbing, on the way home from Woodstock. What happened to you? Well. I stopped by City Lights. It's a bookstore, not a restaurant. And I was going to drop off a poem I just finished. And these two squares asked me about my friend, Allen Ginsberg. You know, I, ball, I eyeballed them to be G-Man Fuzz, straight from Cube City. And I spill it, you know, back to my pad to get the word out. But two more of these squares nabbed me in the alley. And one jabbed me with a hypo. And the next thing I know, 
I'm in a hotel room in Toledo, Ohio, that is, laying there wondering what the heck's going on. I found a letter. They told me that it was much later than I thought it was in a bank account. I couldn't believe any of it at first, but man, I was smart enough to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> kind of shocking when you first come to, ain't it? I thought it was hell at first. Then I thought it was a dream, and now I know it happened. But cats like us for Sounds like you got this one all wrapped up. So take it away. Tell it like it is, and tell us your plan. Well, I'd like to read it from the podium if I could. I'm a little nervous. This is my first press conference. Thank you for the opportunity, Freethinker. I know that lately you've had a guest on that talked about the New Age movement. Well, today, the New Age of politics begins. I am here to offer an alternative to the political malarkey that is circulating that does not even come close to striking at the heart of our national matter. I am here to break the trance of hopelessness that says that there is nothing we can do about the problems of this world and to do battle with the inversive forces that conspire to keep us hopeless. I am here to put the direction of our country back in the hands of the people, that is by the people and for the people. And I am here to finish the job that America started over 200 years ago to ensure liberty, justice, and equality, true equality for everyone. That job is not yet finished. And it is the reason for the crisis we face as Americans. There is so much more on the line in this election year than the economy. As your president, I will be very concerned about the economy. But if we don't do something fast about overpopulation, pollution, growing racial tension and killer disease, we won't be able to have a healthy economy. If we are not able to transcend this what are you going to do for me mentality, we don't have a chance. But I don't believe that's what the American people are saying. I believe you're saying, show me the way. Show me that there is something left to believe in. Restore my faith and my trust in the American way of doing business. I offer you the alternative to nonsense, a clear understanding of what our real problem is, and a common sense approach to solving it. We are at the crossroads of human history. America's number one problem is hopelessness and the trance-like belief that there is nothing we can do about it. At some level, we all know the reason for this hopelessness. It is that our national leadership has failed us. Or to be more precise, it is that our national leadership and the stagnant, worn-out, two-party system has failed us. We can either reevaluate the way our government does business and fix it, or we can watch it go by the wayside 
along with the rest of the old world order that refuses to change. But if we let that happen, know that it will take us down with it. I love America. Let's choose to fix it. But please, no more BS, George Bush. It doesn't work. We don't need another shell game election between the Republicans and the Democrats who play musical chairs in government and then sit down to a finger-pointing contest blaming each other for getting nothing done. Either choice is the same old choice, it's the same old way of doing business. We see through the game, it doesn't work. A wise man once said, if you once forfeit the confidence of your fellow citizens, you can never regain their respect and esteem. It is true that you may fool some of the people all the time, and you may fool all the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people. all of the time. George Bush and good old boys in government, you have forfeited our confidence. You can't fool us anymore. You are the old world order. And it doesn't work. So what will work? First, we must realize that for the last 5,000 years, we have been under the grip of what Rianne Eisler calls the male dominator model of society. In this model, aggressive men have all the power over weaker, less aggressive men, over all women, and over all children. Their irreverence for the feminine side of life is responsible for all wars and injustices our world has known, and it is their continued justification for the rape and the plunder of our mother planet. This dominator model with its greed and its aggression is the old world order and it must end if we are to survive. Buckminster Fuller said that either war is obsolete or man is. Now the good news is that there's a natural momentum of change sweeping our planet. It's as if we're getting some help from above. Now is a great time to pick up a symbolic broom and help sweep it along. Because if we don't quickly reinate cooperation, partnership, and true equality between the sexes, our future is bleak. The feminine principle is the long lost other half of our reality, and we need it back if we are to begin any real new world order. By restoring it, we will be able to work out all our world's problems. In restoring it, we will already have solved half of our problems. When we are sick or hurt or lonely, even the most macho guy among us will go to his mother for comfort. It's time we call in the mother's spirit and the peaceful wisdom of our American women to help us out of this crisis. We have a chance to restore America to her place as a leader in world direction and spirituality. Our founding fathers made our constitution changeable and our courts have recognized affirmative action as a cause to undo past unfairness. With the mandate it will take to elect me president, we can accomplish what I propose. Here it is, the blueprint for change, what I call the solution. Now if you're like me, you're sick and tired of men coming to government to get rich and powerful and complacent. By electing me, we'll send the good old boys a message. 
we'll wake them up, we'll shake them up, and we'll break up their monopoly on power. To do this, I propose the following. First of all, only two terms for all U.S. Senators and only four terms for all U.S. Representatives. Senators and Representatives, you don't know the pain we're suffering. So to help you get back in line with what the American people are feeling, I'm proposing a 20% immediate pay reduction until the economy gets straightened out. This way we can be assured that you'll be as interested in this as we are. Second of all, I'm sick and tired of lobbies coming to Washington and buying up our congressmen and our senators. So to prevent this, there will be no more for-profit lobbies in Washington, D.C. No more shooting fish in a barrel. You're going to have to buy your senators in their own home district. I know I can't prevent it altogether, but we can make it a heck of a lot harder on you to do it. And then the next thing I'm proposing is no more than one federal government pension. Guys come in and have three and four jobs in government and walk away with pensions from each. This has got to go. The only exception will be for career military service, followed by a government job of more than 10 years. Our soldiers have earned their pensions and they deserve them. Now, I'm never going to be able to pull this off, and I realize that, without the help of our women. And we need them. Their wisdom is sorely missing. So I am proposing the revolutionary WRA, the Woman's Repatriation Amendment. You know there are only two senators that are women and only 28 representatives on a national level. The Woman's Repatriation Amendment will give women back representation in Congress. To do this, sometimes more is more. I am going to add 50 new United States senators and 50, 150 new representatives. Now, the law will state, the WIRA will state, that no fewer than one-third of either house will be comprised by either gender. This means that 48 of the, new 50, of the 50 new senators will have to be women, and 150 of the new representatives will be women. Women entering under the WRA will have their own status as the feminine political party. Men, come and join the feminine party if you want. Women, go ahead and be Democrats and Republicans, but there will be no fewer than one-third of either gender in either house. That's how we're going to do it. What are you going to do as president to get things really rolling for us? Well, Freethinker, to do it, we're going to have to have a bold vision of the future direction of this country. I have that. Some people have compared my campaign to the heroic quest. They say it's preposterous that a man can come out of nowhere and run for president. I find it preposterous that our political leadership is going to serve us up the same old shell game one more time and make us choose between the lesser of two incompetencies. You've all become too aware to buy the same old bad leadership, especially at this most critical time in our history. I'm counting on everyone to realize that the rules themselves that they're trying to convince us are the only rules we can play by are the real problem. I'm counting on you to be fed up enough to look behind the curtain, even though the wizard is telling us not to. Now, last year, We've seen how fast impossible world changes can occur. Right now, we need a genuine man of the people, and that man of the people will be for all the people, not just the politically connected or the bureaucratically literate. I believe that George Bush has a dream for a new world order, but he lacks the commitment to end the corruption that will make that new world order something good for the people. In 1980, Reagan promised to dismantle the federal bureaucracy if elected president. All he did was deregulate it out into the private sector beyond the control of government. See, we all want to hear that someone's going to attack this corruption, 